It is one of the biggest fears that people, especially those from out of state, have when they travel across Kansas. What if there's a tornado? Well, while the odds of running into a tornadic storm are rather low, the reality is it could happen, and you need to know ahead of time what your options are. Tonight, we take a look at what you should and should not do if you catch yourself in danger. The Kansas Turnpike is a great and convenient highway system, crisscrossing the state and connecting the state's major cities. But a lot of times it takes you through some of the worst of the weather. Driving toward a dangerous storm could leave you without a safe haven if the storm intensifies. In 2009, several drivers were faced with this very situation, heading west out of Kansas City on their way toward Topeka when a tornado crossed the turnpike near Linwood, just east of Lawrence. So what should you do? First and foremost, know that your exiting options are limited along the turnpike and use good judgment when you see a storm. The Kansas Turnpike Authority has installed nearly two dozen of these underground tornado shelters at all of the manned toll booths as well as the service areas. And they're designed not only for the employees of KTA, but also for the traveling public to take shelter when the storms are at their worst. So if you pull up to a toll booth and there's no one in it, that's probably a good sign that they've already taken cover. So uh, you can go ahead and uh, seek cover than yourself. If you do see a tornado while driving, remember it's often farther away than you think, and you might have plenty of time to get to one of these shelters. And try to get to uh, a uh, service area. And there's ample parking there, and there's just as much room for people in those tornado shelters. When a tornado is approaching, people often head for a ditch way too early. If a storm's several miles away, it's going to take quite a while to get there. If you're caught in this situation, you should safely get out of the path of the storm rather than laying down and waiting for it to hit you. So you've got some choices, even along the Kansas Turnpike. Try to get out of the path of a tornado and know that the shelters are there and intended to be used to keep travelers safe. Well, it's also a good reminder that you should never seek shelter under an overpass. The winds actually strengthen because what happens is as the tornado approaches and moves underneath this overpass, the winds kind of moving around get funneled and channeled through this narrowing and actually gets a little bit stronger at that spot. So you take an already strong tornado and make it even worse. If you'd like to get familiarized, though, with all of the locations of the Turnpike's underground shelters, we've put a map on our website uh, that, on the story entitled... Turnpike Twister. You can check that out at ksntnews.com. Now, Brooke and Jared, it you know, really comes down to avoiding overpasses at all costs and not getting in the ditch too early. You know, over the last few days, we've kind of looked at some pictures. I've shown you guys and some others around the station pictures of tornadoes that are off to the side of the road, and nearly everyone thinks they're actually closer than they are. So basically, use your car to get safely out of harm's way, and it's so much better of an alternative. And unless that storm is right on your heels, right next to you, you don't need to be getting in a ditch. That's great advice, and it honestly could save someone's life because I, myself, you know, I always thought it was the overpass is where you went. So It's a myth that know. keeps being perpetuated, so I'm mm -hmm. glad that, that you broke that tonight. Yeah, you know, Absolutely. the thing, too, about the ditch is, you know, and another one, you'll see people laying down in a ditch literally waiting for a tornado to come hit them. Keep in mind, you've got a car, and it can go fast to get out of the way, get out Go of the way. Go in the other point. direction. Exactly, get away from the path that's moving and get to safely. Don't think of that as outrunning a tornado. It's getting out of harm's way. All right, All right. thank you, Matt. Most families know what to do when a storm happens while at home, but do you have a plan for when you're on the go? Tonight, we looked at a few common places that might be, that you might be at this spring and what you should do if you're in harm's way. Ah, it's spring. The birds are chirping, the flowers are blooming, sports are on again, and now we're looking at severe weather season out ahead of us as well. Just part of that springtime experience. And when you're out and about enjoying the other parts of spring, whether it's local sporting events or just out and about enjoying the nice weather, remember that the weather can change very quickly. And you need to know ahead of time where the nearest storm shelters are and for each location you'll be, what the policies are for where you would go if dangerous weather moves your way. When the sirens blare or even just a close strike of lightning, most outdoor sporting events will be suspended or even canceled and you can start heading home. But if the storm is too close or in your path, you might need to seek shelter at the complex or even in a nearby shelter. Make sure you take note if there is a sturdy shelter on site. If not, Pay attention to the area as you approach. There may be other options nearby. Familiarize yourself with the various ways to leave the area so you can head in another direction if it helps you get out of the path of the storm. 
That's a very different situation than when you're in Manhattan shopping at Town Center. The mall has designated several interior service hallways as severe weather shelters for those who are already in place at the mall. That way you aren't expected to try to venture out into the storm looking for a place of safety. They practice these procedures quarterly and are ready to help you if storms threaten. If they find themselves in a, in a place of business, uh, those places do have plans to take care of their clients. Um, the main thing is to just stay aware. Also know that some stores may not have many sheltering options available. Many large retail stores are built essentially as one big room with very little holding up the roof in the middle. This wouldn't provide adequate shelter during an intense storm or a tornado. We asked the hy V store in Topeka to show us their solution to this challenge. They help usher people to the back where walk-in coolers provide extra security for shoppers caught in the storm. If you're taking in a race at Heartland Park, remember that your seats are long strips of metal and any approaching storm can be dangerous from the risk of electrical shock of lightning. But the management of Heartland Park is ready. We're always training weather is one of the things we talk about, security, safety, all those types of things and, you know, what to do and how to direct people and to help them out if that need, you know, arises. It's everybody's responsibility when you have 10, 20, 30,000 people, we don't have room to house them. Obviously, a smaller event, we have buildings that are, that are you know, very good shelter type buildings. But when you have the big numbers, it's, you know, we have to get out in front of it and the fans have to know what's going on so they can make a personal decision if they want to leave and come back, giving people notice uh, what is happening and thankfully the news folks are on it so like yourself and, and help us to have that information available. If you'd like to see the specific plans that were shared with us by the Shawnee County Parks and Rec Department head over to our website at ksnt.com. Well it happens all the time you've made a quick trip up to the store right as the storm's moving your way. When is it too dangerous to make a run into the store and is it safe to stay in your car? Tonight we look at that very situation. You've pulled up to the store and the rains are just starting up. You can hear some thunder rumbling. What should you do? How dangerous is it to just dart into the store? Last September, we introduced you to Zachary Trinan. He was needing to get to his truck to head to work, waiting for the storm to pass. It was taking too long, so he made the choice to dart quickly to his truck, and that's when it happened. And, uh, I knew there was a lot of lightning in the area, and as I moved, I was trying to wait for it to calm down, and, and I tried to make a mad dash for the truck and didn't make it. Uh, I felt all the hair on my body just stand up, and being in the field and stuff, knowing that, that that's a sign, I just just hoping I can get to a dry spot because our my whole parking lot was absolutely covered with water, and I was like, oh, God, please let it hit a rooftop or something, but it hit the ground, and then the rest was history, so to say. It just kind of fanned out, and, and it got me. We first interviewed Trinan last year, the day he was struck by lightning. Lightning had struck a nearby light pole, much like this one in the parking lot he was trying to run across. It hit this, fanned out across rain-soaked concrete, and struck him. Now, while this partial hit is obviously dangerous, a direct strike is typically fatal. From when it hit the pole, um, I just happened to be actually looking that direction out of the corner of my eye. The pole got hit first, and I saw it almost instantaneously as it hit the pole. It went out and feathered out onto the ground in many different directions, and it was very vivid. I can remember it's, it's the one few things that I actually do remember very vividly from the strike is this purple spider web that fanned out in every direction, and um, one of those streamers got me. And that's, that's all I remember from that until I woke up at laying up to the truck. So. The strike threw him into the side of his truck and burned holes in the soles of his shoes. In many ways, he was lucky. His story could have ended very differently. When it comes to taking your chances with lightning, don't. A typical lightning strike carries over 100 million volts. That's enough power to run all the electricity in more than 500 homes for a day per strike. Trinan knows he was lucky that morning when he decided to dart out to his truck and considers his shoes a reminder of that good fortune. And I plan on putting it in a uh, nice little picture frame or, or like something you'd put a basketball in, but um, haven't yet. A lot of people mistakenly think that you're safe in a car because of the rubber tires on it, but you actually are safe, but it's not because of the tires. It's a concept known as a Faraday cage. The lightning will hit the actual metal of the car, and it goes around the outside or the skin of the metal called a Faraday cage. It doesn't make it under the inside of the car, and that's why you're actually safer staying in your car 
if you're faced with that should I or shouldn't I make that run for it kind of situation. Also, you need to wait until the thunder has stopped or it's only very faint in the distance before it's safe to make that dash into the store. If you'd like to share this story with someone you know, you can head over to our website at ksntnews.com. Well, when a tornado warning is issued, taking shelter as quickly as possible is key. But where should you go when you're at work with no basement or you're in a second story apartment building? That's always a big question. Tonight, we look into a few ideas on how to stay safe when shelter is hard to come by. When the skies darken and storms are approaching, it might become necessary to head for cover. Apartment complexes will sometimes have a dedicated underground shelter on the premises, but not always. If you live in a complex that doesn't have an underground shelter available, once the tornado is close, you need to find shelter where you are. So ahead of time, get to know your downstairs neighbors if you live upstairs, so maybe you can use their apartment's low level if a tornado is heading your way. Or extend the offer to your upstairs neighbors for them to use your apartment if you live on the ground floor. Getting in the lowest level is key. Once inside, make your way to an interior closet or get to a small bathroom without windows. Get inside the tub. That's even better as the sides of the tub are essentially another set of walls that protect you from the outside. When you're at work, the same rules apply. Here at KSNT, we're fortunate enough to have an underground shelter, a basement just a few steps away from our studio. Last April, we almost had to use it, nearly had to make a run for it with a storm coming right at us. But at your workplace, you may not have underground shelter, and if that's the case, you need to move to an interior bathroom or get underneath sturdy office furniture in the interior lowest portion of your office building. What we don't want people to do is to get into their cars and jam up the roads all trying to flee the path and putting themselves in harm's way in doing so. Like a concert just let out, people fleeing. That's what happened in May of 2013 in Oklahoma City. After recent tornadoes in the area, people decided to try to get out of the way and ended up log jamming the roads, putting everyone at an even greater risk. Those highways weren't able to efficiently move that large of a number of people, and it led to a nearly disastrous traffic nightmare. Now, earlier this month, we told you about the shelters that are available along the Kansas Turnpike, but Carl Koenig of the Kansas Highway Patrol has a good reminder about those shelters. We encourage you to stop and use the, the shelters, but we don't want you to come from your home. We don't want you to put yourself in more danger driving here from your home and utilize this as your only tornado shelter. You know, you should have one close to home or your own basement. Well, you know, one of the things to remember is that we don't want people to try to head out and try to evacuate an entire area as a tornado approaches. You might think you have time to do so, but traffic may say otherwise, and then you're caught with no adequate shelter at all. We do want you to have a plan that includes finding the nearest best shelter, whether that's at your own home, a neighbor's basement, or a common shelter very close by, and get there well in advance of the tornado. Once the storm is close, you need to shelter where you are. If you'd like to go back and see any of the weather safety stories from this past month, they are up on our website. You can check that out over on KSNT.com. Of course, that is where you can find all those stories. Put them all there together on the weather page if you want to look there. And again, we're looking at all of these times. Common sense, obviously, is a big thing, but don't try to do things at the last minute. Have the plan in place. That is going to be the most critical part.